Welcome back, my name is Benji and today I want to welcome you to the first episode of Season 2 of YouTube Pro Cycling. It certainly has been a while and I'm so happy that the series is back. Tomsalski, Blackwell and myself have come back together and we've restarted or rekindled the series in the sense that we had Season 1 last time, we are now starting Season 2. It was a wonderful experience in Season 1, if you are unaware what I'm talking about, check it out. It's on all three of our channels, I'll leave a link below to check that out and then you will know the concept of the series. In short, it's basically that we do a career mode with three people and I start off with episode one, I finish my races and I package a save file in a beautiful cardboard box and I send it over to Tim Toski's house and he opens up that box, puts it in the CD drive of his computer and then he gets started on PCM with episode two. Basically, that continues onwards then it's Black Horse's turn, and then it goes back to me. So we do this every single time, and it should roughly be around 38 to 40 episodes in the end, but it will be quite a quite a significant journey, I can tell you. Obviously, as today is the first episode, I'll be diving into the season preparation and also do some races. I think we've got six races in the episode. First things first, I guess we can take a look at our team and look at how our team evolved over the last year compared to season one, what our riders are for each discipline and perhaps already take a look at where they can shine for us. Here we go, a certainly different view than last year because last year we had limited amount of climbers, limited amount of sprinters and we were kind of dependent on the same riders throughout the whole season. This year that is different, we've got multiple riders that can fight for a GC, we have multiple riders that can go for sprints, We've got some additions and some growth in our aspect of cobble sections because our team had some good talent and that is clearly shining through with the youngsters that are growing extremely fast in this playthrough. Anyway, let's take a look at the mountain stat. We've got Rafa Maika still being the number one mountain goat in our team. He is 78 mountain, 77 hill. Not extreme, but also a very limited rider in its potential for the future, so it's not like Micah will suddenly be 81 Mountain at the end of the season. That is extremely unlikely, and as a consequence, we will be dependent on our youngsters to grow at a solid pace to make sure that we can win a Grand Tour with them in the future, because it's gonna be a tough one doing so this year, but it's obviously one of our goals. We would like to win a Grand Tour with this team, preferably this season. If not this season, it might be the next one. We have some additions to our climbing squadrons as well, because next to Micah, we now have Sergio Higita, quite a youngster, 23 years old, with 77 mountains, 77 hills. His acceleration is quite amazing as well, so he's much better to Micah on that aspect. And if I look at the following climbers, we have some climbers that are not per se GC riders, I'd say, because we've got Conrad and Girmay, and if you look at their stats, their weakness is clearly time trial, I think. For Conrad, it's less of a weakness than for Girmay, but Girmay has a real deficit in that stat. And with 75-78 on Conrad, his focus will most likely be being supportive in a Grand Tour and additionally, perhaps, in the Vuelta or also going to focus on the Ardennes Classics because that is the region that he should shine in together with some other riders on the team. And the other rider I said, insane at the age of 20, 75 mountains, 76 hill, and some great secondaries already above the 70s. And last but not least, he has 72 sprint, 73 acceleration for a climber that is rather insane. I'm so curious what we can do with Girmay. He will most likely be the best sprinter in any GC group that reaches the line. So yeah, that is quite a special technique. We'll see how we use it and we'll see how that brings us to the top of the podium at certain points, but next to Girmay, he's not the only talent in our team, because when it comes to the mountains, we've got so many youngsters, Sean Poussin, Bajoli, Vingigo, Tejada still, Diego Camargo, who's been shining in real life as well at the moment, in the Vuelta at Colombia, I'm recording this basically on the uh, evening before the final stage, so he can actually take the full GC of the Vuelta Colombia in real life, which is magnificent. Magnus Court, also being in there, but clearly not our climbing men. So in the team, a lot of GC members, a lot of talent that is forcing its way upwards. And we also have some regions in that with the likes of Bugalo, Petrovic and Tauzao. Looks like Bugalo and Petrovic are better GC riders than Tauzao. Tauzao leaning more towards, 
I don't know, to be honest. I would have said Puncher, but with 69 Mountain and already Time Trial and such, we could form him into a Stage Racer as well. In regards to the punching, we've got Benoit Cosnefoy as our best puncher in the team. 70 Mountain, 79 Hill, 75 Acceleration, a bit less acceleration than Higita, and similar acceleration towards Bajoli. I think that Bajoli has the potential of becoming the best one in the team on that regard, but also one of the youngsters could do that. Atao Zhao, if he does not go for stage race, then he could be puncher, but I think I've made my decision on that anyway, and I think he's going to be a stage racer. But the main concern for Cosmify is obviously going to be the Ardennes. That's his focus. Maybe we can put him in cobble races as well, because he's got some skills in there. We can use him on multiple terrains, so that's always great with a rider. And I think that perhaps Higita can be with him and Konrad in these Ardennes, but most likely we will try and focus Mike and Higita on the Grand Tours. I'm curious what we'll do with Girmai, because he looks the perfect candidate to go to an LBL, because if we can get over the climbs and then take it in the final sprint after the hills, then that is brilliant. I think we might genuinely put Girmai in the regions for the Ardennes as well, and hope that he can do well there. In regards to the time trial stat, it's mainly riders that are GC riders that have these stats for us. Bugalo, 22 years old, 76 time trial. Mad, Foz as well, 75 time trials, 23 years old. Winner of the Santos Tour and under 2020, if you remember correctly. That was one hell of a time. One pure time trial list for us, I'd say. Perhaps Toma as well, but mainly Johan Prize Peterson. He made his way into the team instead of Mikkel Bjerg. So, a talent for a talent. And I guess we'll see what he does throughout the season. Should be fun to ride with. In the Flanders Classics, and every Classics race really, also Paris or Bay, which is not really in Flanders, so guess I was wrong. Heinrich Hausler, still the best cobbler on the squad. Stan the Wolf in second, Kort in third, same level as the Wolf. I think that our leader is going to be dependent on the form of the day, just like last year. I think Heinrich Hausler had a bad day on the Paris Roubaix, which was his main goal of the season. Then again, he had me controlling him, so that was only a catalyst to the bad day, to be honest. David Decker, 22 years old, 72 cobble. It's not his best stat, but it's going to be a focus for him as well. He's Pretty much the opposite of Tom Bonin. He is better at sprinting than at cobble. And I think Bonin was mainly better at cobble than sprinting. I think that's a good comparison. But I'd also try to compare him to the likes of perhaps a Demar. In the sense that Demar can sprint and has already done really well at Paris Rebay as well. So a combination of both, I'd say. Cosnefoy, once again, he can do some cobbles as well. So most likely will be in the team. One stat where we made a big jump is the sprint stat, because we had Molano last year. Molano did pretty well, he had some good results in UAE and such, but he never shined a lot. And I think we've got two members of the squad that grew really well, and obviously the transfer in Caden Groves that has brought us a new sprinting squad. We've got Davi Decker with 78 sprint, 77 acceleration, grown from season 1, and Caden Groves as well with 78, 78. Bosenhagen, obviously not really at the level that he was in the past. I think 2016 was the last year he performed in that Paris Roubaix where Bonin came second and Heyman won. But I think he's going to be a lead out here, perhaps a domestique on all terrains because that is what his stats give us. I can't say much more. He's not that great anymore. Same with Ben Swift. Those people are going to be dependent on the races they ride, but most likely domestiques for the squad. Lead outs, helpers in the mountains helpers on the flat sections, they're good at that. They've got overall all-round stats, and that's perfect for this. Stun the Wolf, also an interesting character. He's got 73 hill, he's got 74 cobble, and he's got 73 sprint. I think he's leaning more towards a cobble guy, but the all-roundness of this guy is also very useful for all terrains as a lead-out, as a helper, and as a rider to win races himself, if he can grow a little bit more, because he's only 23. And last but not least, the most important stat, Chaleplané, is the Barrider of the team. 80 Barrider, and is the only stat that is above 70 for him. So, yeah, he's going to be interesting, to say the least, because it would be such a challenge to try and win a stage with Chaleplané. That'd be amazing. Most likely, that would be fully dependent on the stage. And I think the easiest way to win with Plané would be a third week flat stage breakaway in PCM, because... A lot of the times, when a stage in the third week, perhaps in the Giro and such, 
there's limited amount of chance that the Peloton will try and catch a breakaway. And if they don't do that, there's always an opportunity for strategies and such to bring Planet of Victory. But on terrain where the breakaway is not allowed to go, then it's going to be a tough one. There we go. The basic gist of our team. I think the only riders we didn't name were the riders that just plainly became so much worse over the winter. And it's a bit sad because Luis Leon Sanchez, he's just terrible now. 71 Mountain, 72 Hill. His time trial is completely gone. His secondaries is the only thing that is left. Also, another rider, TJ Van Garderen, he was slaughtered over the winter. 71 flat, 72 mountain, 70 hill, 74 time trial, 73 prologue. That is a massacre. This guy almost won the Tour de France for us. Can you remember that? That's mad. We decided to change some jerseys and also change up the way that transfers were done. We tried to make sure that we combine the in-game transfers of last season together with the transfers that happened in real life for a more realistic feeling towards 2021. And I think it really worked out because those teams look really good and some teams are a bit underrated, some teams are a bit overrated, but it's fun to see that and we'll see how that dominance plays out in the next season here. Before we dive into the sponsor objectives, a quick thank you to Yael for once again making the shirt for the series. It looks beautiful without the gradient this time and with a pattern on it. I love it. I really do. And I'd also like to thank Thais and Jill for helping the implementation of the equipment that Yael made into our database of our game because, well, quite simply, we didn't just continue from the safe fall of last year. We made an entirely new database based on how we ended last year to start on PCM 20 because last season was obviously recorded on PCM 19, so... We're not playing on PCM 2019, we're playing on PCM 2020. And therefore we had to change a lot database-wise to get this one going, but that's also kind of why it took that long. Either way, let's take a look at the sponsor objectives. We've got some interesting ones, let's check them out in order of date. Firstly, Paranis and Tireno Adriatico, we've got a top 5 goal. That seems to be uh, pretty cool to try, because it's right on the brink of what's possible, I think, for this squad. Then Milano San Remo, top 10, seems like a very easy one. Stage wins at Catalonia and Basque Country, top 10 at Tour of Flanders. I think Flanders will be a difficult one, but I haven't really tried with this team, so I'm curious if we can actually get into a top 10 with a team like this. And it also depends on how our youngsters and cobble stats grow. Like, if Decker gets like a plus 5 by then, then it should be easy, but if he stays on 72, then we're dependent on the likes of Hauser, which is less likely. Paddy Roubaix, we've got a top 10 as well. We got 29th last time, I think, so that's unlikely, but we'll try and do better. I think we can do better. Hausler has fucking punctured! Oh my god! Yeah, it was not a good ride last year on Paris Roubaix, and I take full blame of that. Yes. Amstel Gold Race, Flesh Wallon, and Liège Boston Liège seems like a top 5 on the first two, and a top 10 on the final one. All three should be potentially be possible will be a close one top 10 in Liège should be easy genuinely I think that is very much doable stage wins in the Giro d'Italia stage wins in the Tour de France stage wins in La Vuelta so stage wins in all three Grand Tours I think that's very much doable and as an addition Kitem de Dauphiné we need a stage win as well Lombardia being the last goal of the season with a top 10 seems overall like all doable I don't think there's like a really difficult one there that I don't expect to happen. Perhaps the likes of Flesh Wallon top 5 might be more difficult knowing that we don't necessarily have a rider with like 80 acceleration and perhaps our riders don't have enough resistance for Mude Hui. I don't know. It will depend on how that race is ridden, I guess, but all in all seems like very doable goals. When it comes to the calendar, we had to adapt the game a tiny bit because we needed to make the episodes kind of work, in the sense that five to seven stages per episode seemed like it was perfect. We tried to adapt that throughout the whole season, and we also had to move some races to make that possible, because as an example, Paris-Nice and Tireno are normally at the same time, and it's better if we can split Nice in an episode and Tireno in an episode, because otherwise you guys will be watching an episode with the first five stages of Nice and would have to wait two days to know how Paris-Nice ended, which is always a bit mess, so we try to put those races in one episode instead to 
make sure you can have the full picture and the full story in one episode. Obviously in regards to Grand Tours that's impossible so we split that up into four episodes each because otherwise 21 stages per episode would be pretty weird and pretty difficult to make. So you guys probably wouldn't mind too much but sometimes I think you guys don't want to watch four hours straight PCM content so I'd say that perhaps it's good that we split these up in uh, about four episodes these Grand Tours. So that's kind of the plan throughout the season. Goals are pretty much just the Walter races, so if you know them, then you know what I'm talking about. We made one big change, and that's moving Santos to an under to, well, October, because we felt like it, and mainly because I felt like riding Mallorca instead of Santos to an under, so we adapted the calendar a bit to make that work, and yeah, that's how it turned out. Pretty cool, pretty fun. In a very quick fashion, let me go through them. We start off with... NCs and also the Mallorca Challenges and the Lucia, then the Walter races of the first few months of racing. We're leading into the beautiful classics during Bay Vasco as well. Romani Giro, and then in the next part is obviously Dauphiné Swiss, NCs, Tour de France, and the last part of the season is Quebec and Montreal, Polonia, Utah, and also La Vuelta, and then last but not least, a bit of a a run out of the season with Bing Bang Tour, Guangxi, some of the Italian last race of the season together with the Down Under and Seagor races at the end of the season. So that's a special aspect of our calendar. Australian races at the end, but I guess it's for the fun, so it doesn't really matter. Next to races, all riders need to train as well. And to improve their pre-season preparation, we're going to send them to a training camp at the start of January. We'll do so. Perhaps in this section, I recall that to being medium price. Yes, 120 per participant. We're a pretty poor team, so we ain't gonna spend too much on this. All day long, past the Australian NCs, and we will put the Australians out of the selection for that. So, Kaden Groves and Hauser, those are only Australians, if I recall correctly. Yes, and that is it. There we go. The others can go to uh, a training camp. And... Oh, I get a notification for that. An achievement unlocked. Preparation. That is brilliant. Either way, I'd love to do another one. Can I do that? I do not know. Let's do a 5-star one for these two runners. The reason that a 5-star one is necessary is because they need to get in form quicker. So let's hope 5 days are enough to get them in a decent shape for the NCs. That is... Oh, you must select 8 rider. Oh boy, I did the same last year, didn't I? Hausler on 5 days. Confirm that. Really? Eight riders? Couldn't you tell me before I send everybody off to freaking Spain or something? Oh no, I forgot. Yeah, we can't fix this, can we? Can we cancel the other one? We can cancel the other one. Oh, I have to pay half of it. Oh no. Shall we do it? That's so much money though. Fuck it. Nah, we're gonna keep it. No training camp for these guys, I guess. That's not ideal, but yeah, unfortunately, I forgot. One of the more important choices here is which riders go to which Grand Tour, and I think we've got a relatively realistic setup on our team for that. For the Grand Tours, we're going to be heading to the Giro with the sprinter David Decker and the GC rider Rafa Maika. That's being encompassed by a pretty solid squad. We've got the likes of... Fingarden, Bajoli, Prisa Peterson, Foss, Milano, and Girmay all heading towards the Giro. When it comes to the Tour de France, the following team is heading there. Higita as the GC rider, and Groves, Kaden Groves as the sprinter. So, our two best sprinters have already had a Grand Tour allocated to them. Hauser going to the Tour as well. We've got Magnus Court Nilsson, Benjamin Thomas, Harold Tejada, Jean Poussin and Camargo, so in support of the likes of Higita there. And the final Grand Tour is one with plenty of hill stages, and if you shout hill stages, Cosnefa comes to the party, and he's gonna be a free element there. I don't necessarily want to enforce GC on him. He's only got 70 mountain, so highly unlikely. We're gonna be taking Higita straight from the tour, also to La Vuelta, and Conrad is going to be heading to his first Grand Tour there as well. And we've also got Molano, Tijado, Camargo, and as the final rider, Ben Swift there. So Milano's going to be the sprinter in La Vuelta. Not too many flat stages, so we don't want to send a pure sprinter there anyway. 
So in short, Micah is heading for the Giro, Higita for the Tour, and in the Vuelta we've got a combination of Conrad and Higita, with Cosnefa being a bit of a, a third wheel there. Obviously the main objective for Cosnefa is still going to be the Ardennes and perhaps Classica San Sebastian in the middle of the season, and outside of that, Decker for Jim Dwevelgem would be nice, and I've also put Hausler and the other couple riders for paris Bay and the Will for Tour of Flanders, so... Pretty generic thing. I've decided to limit the amount of regens we use in this playthrough because I feel like Tauzao, Eugenie Bugalo, and the other guy that I can't remember, those three are really talented, they're really strong already, but I want to see what they grow into before I start assigning them Grand Tours and start taking away spots from real riders because somehow I personally have a bit of a grudge against generated game riders but that might just be me. You know the story regarding staff and training. I'm gonna do the same thing as I always do. I need three trainers. We've got an international trainer for groundbreaking, traditional legendary expensive one, and uh, we also need a modern one. So let's go towards new staff. Let's go to trainer. Let's try and find a pretty decent one, but not too expensive, perhaps international, and go for modern. In regards to the nationality, I personally don't really care, but I think Erik van der Aarden is going to be the one I'll be taking here. That is okay. We've got three of our trainers, and that is perfect. We might need another one in the end, but I'll probably take a cheaper one for the last few riders, because we've got more than 24 riders, and the ideal number of riders per trainer is eight. If you go above that, then they start training the riders less effectively, so... If we want to have a trainer for everybody, we need more than three. But we'll see in a second what we need, really. That's pretty fine. Scouts? Uh, I don't care. Why do we need a scout? Do we need one? I don't think so. We don't want to spend money on that. Anyway, that's roughly it for our trainers. Let's take a look at the staff training. As usual, this is completely wrong with the likes of Bajoli training for Northern Classics for some reason. We've got the bot for Northern Classics as well. I'll go ahead and put this right. And I'll do so um, pretty quickly off camera. TLDR of what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at the rider type. I'll see what I want to train something into. And if I see, for example, the likes of Binyam Girmay, then I see that his stats aren't really leaning towards the stage race because his time trial stat is too low. And because of that, we are training him more in the area of a puncher. And not necessarily a climber because his hill is higher than his mountain stat. So that decision is made. After all this is done, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and select a trainer for someone. An example for that is I'm going to go to Binyam Girmay. I see under training that he has a trainer assigned to him, groundbreaking, but he doesn't know his style yet. So I'll just drop him in the uh, Erik van der Aden group because then we've got a spot left with the other trainer if I find someone with groundbreaking and such. So I'll just apply a trainer that fits with their type of training, their style of training, and the style of training of the trainer. So I'll just do that off camera because otherwise it's a pretty boring thing to do. So I'll see you in a second. There we go. That is done. And I think we need four more riders with a trainer. They are all riders without a style. So on paper, I could take any staff member that is on this list and they'd be happy. So I'm going to try and go for a pretty cheap one. Probably won't be too great for their growth but perhaps national somewhere in the middle there and let's go and take was that an Australian no it is uh New Zealand right I think so I'll take it there we go there we go up to now I've always forgotten to do this but on paper we should look in a few months back at the screen and check if everybody's still on a question mark or not if they have decided what their style is we need to adapt their training accordingly and if they don't like their trainer, we need to find a solution as well. So every few months we should do that. But honestly, I've forgotten that every single time I've done a career. So I'll have to keep it in mind somehow. Nonetheless, I think that's basically it for the training. I think we're almost done, but we still need to do this first objective thing and this preseason tab. So let's get through that the same way we always do. Sold by first objective, then look at the amount of weeks and put a preseason accordingly. Seven weeks is still pretty fast, so I think I'm going to start on high and not necessarily very high for that one. There we go. Then 10 weeks is medium. 
I think I'll try and get Hauser on very high and Caden Groves for the sakes of the Australian NCs. Yes. So let's confirm it and we're basically ready to get started. We've arrived on the 2nd of January. I decided to do the uh, planner off camera because it's a bit boring to go through the riders and select which races they're going to. It's a pretty simple system. I'm going to take Caden Groves to the sprints all episode here. And I think Girma is going to be our leader for the climbing races in Mallorca. That is uh, basically it. We've got some support by plenty of riders, but I'll go through them once we are in the uh, races. Our first race of the season is the ITT National Championships of Australia. So time trialing, which is not exactly what you want to see if you've got Hausler and Groves at the start. Honestly, because it's a waste of time for both of us. I'm just going to simulate this one. We don't want to see this, you don't want to see this, and it's basically a time trial, so our results are going to be bad anyway. 40th for Hausler and Groves is way down on 51st, and the Australian Championships ITT was won by, no surprise, Rowan Dennis. What a surprise though that he was an equal time as Michael Matthews. Opposite to the ITT, I'm very much looking forward to riding the Australian road race. This one, we've got same people at the start, and it's a pretty hilly parkour as usual on these road races and looking at it we've got 70 hill and 67 hill on Hausler and Groves on paper that makes Hausler leader but it really depends on the finish if I can get Groves over that hill and sprint with him then that would be amazing but I really think it's gonna be a tough one to do that the form is good though 95% 91% good morale but I've seen that we've got minus one RDC which is because they don't like the sun. Really? They're Australians. They're used to baking on the street. Damn it. Oh man. Why? Why do these riders not like sun? Here we go. The YouTube Pro Cycling jersey. Absolutely love it. Genuinely. I really like it. It's got that pattern on the back and such. Absolutely beautiful. So thanks again Yael for making that one for us. Really appreciate it. And it's always top work so... Great. Something that always works in these Australian Championships is looking at the breakaway and checking if a Mitchelton rider is in there, because if not, then they are most likely going to chase the whole stage, and that's the case. House and spacing behind the 8-man breakaway two minutes ahead. Let's get some water because the red bottle is in town. There we go. And I should not do that with Groves, of course. I should do that with Hausler. That was a bit of a mistake. Let's get myself a bit more in the front. In the meanwhile and we're still pretty well settled we had some severe chaos in the peloton the group was split in multiple parts and i had to offer up hausler to try and save grove so we've lost him already heinrich so sad i'm gonna try and recover in the peloton a bit with groves and potentially lower it to 65 in the descent make sure i don't get caught out in the future because genuinely the group was like split up in like five parts just a second ago I think this is going much better than last season regarding the Australian Championships because these guys keep on dying with their domestiques every time and if they keep doing that then I should not have too much trouble staying in this group and if I stay in the group then it's me versus Yoen, isn't it? So that's gonna be a curious battle. I'm not sure if I can actually take him considering he's a better sprinter. Perhaps the timing in the sprint is gonna be the most important knowing that it is slightly descending towards that <laughs> yeah full full on descent really it's not even a slightly descending area i'm not gonna pace that i was trying to keep myself at the front but the others didn't actually go over me now they are looks like rob standard is really pushing it if i can keep myself up there that would be amazing let's get past maury i'll have to go 92 ish to try and prevent us dropping oh this is a hard tempo come on Gotta try and survive, I can do it. Let's hope no one attacks. Michael Match is here as well, forgot about it. Pretty important rider. Let's hope we uh, can beat him in a second. Looks like we're gonna survive the climb and attack by Simon Clark. I don't have the riders to catch that. I think that Match is trying to close it alone, I'm fine with that. Oh, no, no, no. Are they actually gonna let him go? They can't. It's Mitchelton, they've got... Plenty of riders to take care of this, right? I would hope so. It looks like Clark is almost done, though. So, 
If I can save some energy in this descent, just stick ourselves to the wheel, I can try something with a sprint here. And it's looking good for us, but it's also looking good for Caleb Ewan and Michael Matthews. Even though Matthews looks to be spending more energy at the front of the peloton here. We're about to start the climb again. Simon Clark is up there. It looks like these guys aren't really chasing anymore. The fact that Robert Power has to chase it really shows something. So I guess I'm going to have to do it myself, but I don't necessarily have the climbing energy to catch Simon Clark on a hill. So I am very curious if we can actually make this happen. 16 seconds. Let's go on 85. I think we've got the yellow bar to do this. Let's keep on going 85. Me versus Simon Clark. 21 seconds. He is a better climber though. Let's up it towards 90 for this last section of the climb. We've got Rob Stannett done. Robert Power in our wheel. We are closing the gap now. 17 seconds. 14 seconds. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Terengano in our wheel once again. I'm going to lower the tempo again. Who do we have up here? We've got you in a bit behind. Can I attack? It's Groves. I shouldn't, right? I think I don't need to attack. I think it would be stupid to attack. Do I try and catch him now? Perhaps? There we go, to try and drop the tempo if I catch his wheel. And we've got him. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got him. Let's sit up again. And let's see, we've got 4.7k to go. I'm going to actually have to go myself soon because he's got a bit of a gap again. Energy shell on ourselves. 3 kilometers to go. I don't want to go yet. I don't want to go yet. I don't want to go yet. These corners are helping. These corners are helping. And should I start launching? I think I should start launching, shouldn't I? Ooh, is that too early? I think it might be early, but I think I'll risk it. Caden Groves, come on. Let's do it. Caden Groves goes for the sprint. Let's go to the right side of the road. 1k to go. Gonna take the inner corner. Groves versus Matthews. Groves is gonna become Australian champion. Yes, he is. We got a jersey. And it looks like Ewan comes in second. Simon Clark still with third. Michael Matthews in fourth. But Caden Groves is the Australian champion of 2021 for YouTube Pro Cycling. Our first victory in our first stage. What a finish. Hausler did great work bringing him back the moment that we got caught behind. Here we go, the myth, the man, the legend for YouTube Pro Cycling on the podiums of his first race at the team. Caden Groves takes home the National Road Championships of Australia. I bloody love that jersey. I absolutely do. Amazing. Like, you can't imagine, but I'm actually really happy about this because whenever you start a career mode on Pro Cycling Manager, wherever I created a custom career mode in the past, I'd always be trying to get at least one Australian in my custom team or two Australians to try and battle it out with Simon Garens back in the day. So, uh, I love it. I really do. I'm surprised that the likes of a Richie Port or something don't necessarily attack on this kind of stage because I think if Port attacks on that last climb, then everybody in the whole peloton is fucked. So, he clearly doesn't want to do so because he ended up 15th together with Rohan Dennis, his teammate. The Aussie NCs are over. Four more races to go today and we're going to start off with the flat Trofeo Campos, one of the uh, Mallorca challenges. And I think this one really fits our sprinter once again. Caden Groves did really well at the Aussie NCs, took home the jersey and is now going to try and show it off in full fashion, hopefully coming fast at the finish line here. An extremely large breakaway for this kind of stage, to be honest. The flat one, we've got... 12 breakaway members and 2 chases right now, we've got Plané in the breakaway, but this break is going nowhere. This is a sprint stage, we all know that. But, obviously, there's only one thing you want to see, and that's Caden Groves right now. This is a beautiful new jersey, it's kinda rainy, so kinda sucks for the color palette. Looks better in the sun, but I'm still loving it. Here we go, the final 7 kilometers. I've set up a sprint train with Zhao in first, Hauser in the wheel. Molano has sprinting lead out and grows behind. Our competition is the likes of Colbrelli, Krieger, Belletti and so forth. So not exactly the biggest of names on paper. We're basically favored here. So we got to finish it off. Four kilometers and a half. I'm going way too late. That is uh, completely my bad. I'll actually pause it for a second. Put him on 99 or otherwise I will actually go mad. Energy gel on the last two riders. 
I'm preparing Milano as well for the actual sprint. And I'm already gonna go with Hausler here because otherwise we've got too many riders in our train. We're looking good. Two and a half kilometers. I'll wait a tiny bit more. I'll try and launch with Hausler now. And I'll try and launch with... Milano? Looks like Groves is dying in the wheel of Milano. Oh fuck, this is uphill. I think we're fucked. Are we fucked? I think we're fucked. Groves goes. Out of the wheel. Colbrelli. Yeah, we're done. We got slaughtered by Milano. Oh boy, why is Milano better than Groves? Krieger wins ahead of Ryaboshenko and... Milano just murdered Groves. Was it his flat stat? Was it his secondaries? I don't know, but we finish 9th, 10th, and 11th. That's a piss poor result, to be honest. I probably jinxed it by saying, we're the favorite here. <laughs> Milano, I don't know what you did, but that was a bit too fast for our teammate, mate. You gotta go slower, and I don't often say this to a sprinter. Milano, you genuinely need to go slower, or otherwise, we might have some trouble using you as a lead out. Next up, Trofeo Serra de Tramontana, one I'm really looking forward to because... It's a very intriguing parkour and race all the time. We've got a rider that fits perfectly for it, I'd say. Binyam Girmay is going to be our leader here. Perhaps not the best climber on our team, but if we can get over the hills and we can get over that last little bump towards the finish line, then a 72 sprint and 72 acceleration should be better than anyone in that group. So that's our goal. Girmay over the climb and Girmay for the victory. Let's hope it works out. And the race is on. I don't think I'm going to put anyone in the breakaway. I feel like on this kind of stage, it's always going to the peloton. So there's no point in doing so. I know that Plan is on paper, the guy that has the skills to do so. Get my way a zero day, which is good. The rest of the team is properly slotted. Minus three on Plan A, minus one on Foss. We've got minus one on Hausler, minus four on Thomas. Thomas, my bad. Whew. It's not Thomas, that's clear, from his mountain stat. Anyway, we've got Tao Zhao. Pretty good form, but why does he get a plus one on the day and then a minus one on sprint? Makes no sense. I'll try and wait until we're at the top of this climb to get people to the front to help out Girmay. Otherwise, I'm really spending their energy unwisely. The tempo in the peloton is not too high anyway, so should be fine in doing so. Meanwhile, let's do a quick shout out to Ayuso, a rider that is joining UAE in the coming years. I think he uh, is starting at Cometa, I'm not sure. Is it Cometa? Not a clue. He's going somewhere for half a year or a year, and then he goes to UAE. He's a really good talent from Spain, so I'm very curious what he's going to do in real life in the future. But remember that name, Ayuso. He's going to do stuff in the future. Because I actually started getting worried about the breakaway, I've decided to put Plan A at the front of the peloton. He's gonna be reeling in the breakaway slowly but surely, perhaps at like 68 for the whole stage. It's only 100k to go, so I can't wait too long. I don't know why, but it seems like we're the only people interested in bringing back the breakaway here, and it is really concerning because I don't know what to do. I think I'll put Toma at the front then to get away Tauzel perhaps? Both on 85, I've got the likes of Foss protecting Girmay right now, Van Garden in the wheel of Girmay to make sure that whenever Foss is done protecting, then I can switch over to Van Garden protecting Girmay. So that's kind of the plan. Hauser getting water for the lads just before the climb starts, perhaps a bit late, but he'll get there. I can feel it. It's Heinrich. He's a god. Oh, and suddenly they're interested. The climb starts and Gregard starts spacing. The moment that I've brought ourselves so close to the breakaway. Damn it. I'm gonna try and attempt to not spend too much energy on this climb. Gonna try and survive with Zhao, Toma and so forth. So that I can perhaps use them on the flat section on top here. That's what I've got in mind. If it will work, I guess we'll find out pretty soon. Astana's really pushing it together with Bahrain right now. I've got myself a bit out position, but I think I can get to the front without losing too much energy in the coming section. And once we get over this little bit of a bump, then I can try and save some energy towards the final proper climb there. But I think we're surviving quite well. I'm just a bit concerned about the gap to the breakaway. We still need that to come down, so let's hope that works out. Oh boy, the tempo in the peloton is dying. Foss to the front ASAP. Come on, get the tempo up again. Congardon and then Girmay. Let's hope we don't spend too much energy doing that. Ah, 
It sucks that we have to take care of this our own. Uh, 2 minutes 50. This is a pretty decent break. We have a lot of people in here, so... Yes, I'm scared about the break suddenly. Here's me saying before the stage shots, the break never wins this. Oh, never gonna happen, but... It's totally the opposite right now, and... I am very worried. Nervais is pushing, very similar rider to me, except for the fact that he's got a worse sprint than Girmai. But... I am hoping that I can hang on and a gel on myself already done. Probably should have kept that towards the finish line. That was not an ideal move. I'm gonna attack on top here. Probably too early. Is it too early? I think it is. Ugh, that's gonna be tough to survive till the top. Is that the descent right there in the tunnel? Or is that still an uphill section? I think I'm pretty much fucked with this gap. 15 seconds, 99. And they're gonna catch me just when I start the descent, will they? Oh no, I'm actually gone from the group. Let's see if I can get something going, perhaps get some energy back in the descent and somehow make my way back, but apparently the descent of Izagire is much better than me and he just sticks to the wheel directly, but on Bia as well, 78 downhill, clearly better than the 68 of myself. I'm afraid it's over, nobody cared. Nobody cared about this damn one-off race apparently because the break is winning, and they don't exactly have the biggest name in it, so I would not know who has an opportunity of taking it. Perhaps the likes of this Lopez man, or Tarame? Mm, meh. Matt Holmes, maybe? Might be possible. I think those are the biggest names here. The break is going into the last kilometer pretty soon. I'm very curious who's gonna take it. Sunderland, also pretty decent. Dylan Sunderland. And it looks like Tarame is gonna take it from the front. Fernandez in the wheel. Sandler trying to come over, it looks like Tarame has it. Ooh, it's gonna be close. I think Tarame takes it. And Dylan Sunderland comes in second. Nobody cares. Last kilometer, I'm gonna sprint away from this damn ugly group that doesn't want to ride a race. Oh my god, I hate it. Genuinely hate it. Despicable cyclists. Ah. Oh. Gidamai wins the sprint, 40 group. Second not so ideal result for us. We've got a beautiful victory already, but that does not mean that we should be happy with days like this. I really think Girmai was one of the better guns in this race if it came down to the GC guys actually playing it out on the climbs. I'm calling it GC guys, there's no GC on a one of race of course, but you know what I mean, the elites, not the breakaway, and yeah, the break won Tramuntana. I just can't wrap my head around it. Anyway, let's try again. We've got a hill stage that basically has the entire finish of the last stage, in the middle, I think. Yes, it is. It's the same hill. After the finish of the last stage here, we've got in the middle of the stage, the start of a very hilly parkour. Oh, I think that Girmai can survive. And if we get Girmai to the finish with the peloton, it's gonna be doable, I think. He does not have acceleration, though. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. But the sprint stat is there. And let's hope we can take home one of these Mallorca challenges. And preferably with Girmai because I'm pretty hyped about him. Holy macaroni! Plus five on Girmai. That's crazy. He's a monster. What the fuck? That is brilliant. We gotta take this one home. I'm just gonna put someone at the front from the start. No large breakaways will go today because Charles Planet is gonna take care of it this time around. Okay, change of plans. We tried with Planet in the breakaway. Did not work out, and therefore I'm going to try and attempt to put someone in the breakaway, Taozao, and therefore try and neutralize the breakaway from within. I'll see if that works out, otherwise I'll put a stronger rider at the front of the peloton. We've gotten over the big hill with basically everybody in the peloton. Taozao got caught as well, break roughly got caught. There's like 8 people left, but the way these guys are pacing in the peloton, I am not worried at all, so I think I'm going to... Maybe set someone at the front just in case, perhaps a Hausler off to this next section if I can get him over this hill. And otherwise perhaps Toma, and then I can try and control it for this next couple of hills because I really think that we've got an opportunity with Girma at this finish. Since when is that a green car? I swear that's a red car normally. Where's the red car of death? It's now a green car of death. Sounds like way less dangerous. I think I'll put myself on 90 or more to 
Try and make sure that Freyle doesn't get away because the man is attacking. Yes, he is. Oh boy. Gotta make sure I can catch that. I have limited energy on my teammates, my domestic, so want to make sure that he's within reach. Let's go on 85, perhaps save some energy by just protecting Tao Zhao here while he is doing the chase. Fingardrin in second position behind Tao Zhao, and obviously Girmai in the perfect position for uh, managing the stage win. We've got a sneaky attack by Freyle, and I don't like that. I really don't. Because... I don't necessarily have enough teammates to take care of it. Tao Zhao's trying. I think Van Garen's next. I'm curious if anyone else is gonna take over because it seems like they're leaving it all up to us again. And they're basically removing all my abilities for a lead out in a second here, so I guess I'm gonna try and drop Toma from the uh from the protection services there. I think I'll go towards Van Garen now. Perhaps try and regenerate a bit with Tao Zhao. And actually I'll protect with Tao Zhao. There we go. Toma can try and regenerate just in case he can offer a bit of a, a lead out later. But why is nobody else helping me out? I really don't get it. This man's dangerous. Now they are. Is that an attack? Nope, it is spacing by Amador, I think. No, it's an attack. Amador is attacking. Why? Why do you not just help me, man? I need to catch Freyle, and I think I can, but it's going to lose me my beautiful train I had in, in my mind here. So if I can get to his wheel right now, that would be brilliant. I'm going to take over with Girmay. It's too early. It's too early, bro. Carlos Rodriguez on the right. I don't like that I have to take care of this myself. 10 seconds. I think I can do it, though. The climb's about to start pretty soon. Is it 1.5 kilometers of climbing? It is 2.5. And a gel right now. I'm in a really good position, but I'm also just ahead of everybody. So I'm not sure it's ideal. We've got Izagire is on the left. We've got a move by Gregard for Izagire. I don't want to go too fast yet. Want to make sure I can sprint it out. Perhaps in the wheel of Dunbar right now. Let's hope he doesn't die too quickly. Maybe he's a Gire. I think that's gonna be the ideal wheel. Let's try and see if I need to switch. I think he's a Gire is still gonna be the uh, ideal wheel, so I'm gonna keep it the same. Is it going to not steepen out? Yes, it's gonna steepen out, so I'm gonna try and sprint right now. Last 700 meters. Let's try and get past his Gire. Binyam Girmay for his first victory at YouTube Pro Cycling. Nobody is near him. He's gonna be taking it home. Beautiful victory by Girmay. What a screenshot that is as well. I love it. What a victory. Second victory in four stages. We're on such a streak today. There we go. Binyam Girmay on the podium. And I just found out that Binyam is basically Benjamin. I didn't know that. It's a variant of the name. My name is Benjamin. We're basically name brothers here. That's crazy. Oh my god, I just found out the rather disturbing meaning of my name. Son of my right hand. That is disturbing as fuck. <laughs> oh no. I can't unthink that ever again. My goodness. Anyway, meanings of names aside, Binyam Girmay takes it home. Summit here in second, and Yon is a Gire in third, so we've got a victory we so wanted. I expected it easier on the second stage than on this one, regarding all the Mallorca challenges, because I still see that as one race for some reason. But anyway, we've got one more to go. Trofeo Playa de Palma, maybe a bit of a, a redemption. Oh, but he's a Peterson, man. What does he have? Can I see that somewhere? I should. Decrease in energy. Why does everybody keep on having a decrease of energy, like... I have it all the time, but that doesn't mean I'm injured. Oh, man. I'm gonna ditch him, I guess. Can we take someone else? I don't want to take Girmay to this stage, though. That's not fitting. Benjamin Toma can uh, make an appearance again. So, Toma will have a few race days on his address today. But that's not too big of a deal. We'll do the same as the first race, but perhaps try and plan out the sprint better. Because Molano did... Too well of a lead out, I'd say. So, I might launch much later with Molano, because I don't trust his lead out at all right now.
This is really disturbing. For some reason, nobody cares again, and I've had to chase down so long. Everybody on my team is dying. Why does nobody want to win a one-off race? I don't get it. Five minutes and a half. I've got two riders and a sprinter. I'm literally going to use my lead out trying to catch a breakaway. Can you imagine that? Oh, it looks like we've got help. Mitchelton's taking over. 22 kilometers, 3 minutes 30. I'll have to help, I think. I'll have to fly the last 10 kilometers to make this happen. Last 15 kilometers now. Looks like Erviti's trying to push it now. Or is that a tax? That's actually a tax. 2 minutes 40, 17 kilometers. I do not have a team to keep on chasing this. Oh, I will literally have to use Milano to do this. I don't like that. That's not a fun thing to do. But 2 minutes 20, I'll have to. I will have to. 85 so far on Thomas. We've got BMB Hotels really pushing it. Trying everything in their power to bring back this 20-man breakaway. Why did I let a 20-man breakaway get away again? Like... I learned my lesson last time, but not on this flat stage. Yeah, I think we're fucked. 1 minute 45 with 7k to go. The race is lost. We're not gonna take home a third stage today, but... I think we've had a pretty good run today. I'm literally spending all my energy to try and bring back Caden Groves here. Everything I can, but it is very unlikely. Extremely unlikely that it's gonna work. I'll even have to start pacing with Groves myself right now to try and make it possible 124. Can I somehow close that down in the span of this next few... Ooh, Richese with an attack? Is that true? Turginao? I can't do that. I need to try and follow people. I can't just close it down like that. Three and a half kilometers. Let's follow the wheel of Coca And let's hope we can still magically make something work. They're starting to sprint up there, so it's unlikely that it will work out. But we're still in the wheel of Kokar. Kokar! What the fuck? Oh, no, 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 Kokar. We were so close, and he just gives up. 1.5 to go. Nah, this ain't happening. And the race is won by Irizar. My goodness, Julian Irizar taking it ahead of Xavier Caneas. Something like that. Mikel Alonso comes in third. We're not even going to finish in the top 20 because 20 people in the break. 22nd, most likely, because we do win the sprint in the peloton, which makes the feeling even worse. There we go. Not the best results for our squad. We finished 22nd with Caden Groves. Expected more from the sprints, to be honest, in Mallorca. I hope to take at least one home, so a bit of a disappointing Mallorca, I'd say. I think we had more opportunities than the ones we used, and perhaps we need to... Uh, plan out the breakaway catching a bit more for the upcoming episodes because that seems to be a weakness right now. Despite all that, we've got a happy Girmai, a happy Caden Groves, apparently even an extremely happy Girmai, which is great. That is uh, going to be it for today's episode. Let's take a look at what we have planned in Tim Soski's episode on Wednesday. Joe's going to be taking care of quite a few races, nine in total. He starts off with both the NCs for Colombia and South Africa, and afterwards he starts the Vuelta Andalusia, which is five days long, has one beautiful mountain stage on day four, and a bit of a punchy hill stage on stage five, so quite curious how he's gonna do. I'm wishing him good luck. If you are unaware how the series works, well, now the first episode is over, I'm gonna send my save file to Joe, and you can watch the second episode on his channel, First link in the description. If you liked today's episode, and tap that like button. If you didn't tell me what's wrong, I'll try and make it better for you next time. That's basically it. Thank you for watching. And I guess we'll see you next time on Joe's channel on Wednesday. Goodbye.